Hi there, my name is Dr. Lori Kirschenbaum, and I'm delighted to be the chair of this year's BCDS Outstanding Early Career Investigator Award. And on my left is Dr. Uh, Prabha Nagareddy, who is one of the finalists. He's from the University of Kentucky, and he's going to tell us a little bit about his science on myeloparesis following myocardial infarction and how it involves activation of uh, inflammation, protein, NRLP3, and uh, how it recruits neutrophils uh, through uh, S100 uh, proteins. So, um, Prabha, tell me about your science. Uh, uh, thank you, Dr. Kishanbaum. <coughs> so, um, Lately, I've been studying the, uh, the, the mechanisms by which the inflammatory cells are recruited to the heart. So this actually stems out from our previous work in diabetes and obesity, where we actually uh, studied these uh, mechanisms of monocytosis, specifically monocytosis, because uh, that's the cell that we focused uh, in, in diabetes and obesity. So what we are trying to understand is that following an injury to the heart, what exactly are the events that orchestrate uh, with the bone marrow and the spleen to attract these inflammatory cells to the heart. So we are specifically focused on this neutrophil derived damage associated molecular patterns, also called as DAMPs. Uh, a few classical examples of these DAMPs are the so-called S100 proteins, uh, more specifically S108 and A9. So these two proteins are released in response to the death of a cell uh, by necrosis. And whenever there is inflammation, acute inflammation or injury to the uh, organ. So these cells are, uh, uh, the, uh, these proteins are released into the circulation and they usually help attract uh, monocytes and neutrophils to the area of injury. That's very, very exciting. Um, in fact, uh, there's quite a bit of interest now in necrosis signaling and uh, how that it contributes to cardiac dysfunction. Um, do these proteins, the S100 proteins, evoke a systemic effect or predominantly uh, restricted to the heart itself after MI? No, it does evoke uh, a systemic effect. Uh, so what we are trying to see is basically the, uh, the leukocytes in general in the circulation and they all go up very quickly and very rapidly. Oh, it's very interesting. Um, you know, you mentioned early on about uh, diabetes, which is a, ma a major uh, uh, risk factor for heart disease, heart failure in That's particular. Right. Have you had a chance to uh, study uh, this pathway, the signaling pathway in diabetics? Oh, that's right. As I said previously, uh, the whole work that I right now I'm studying in, 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 the, in the model of myocardial ischemic injury uh, stemmed out from our previous studies in diabetes. So what we were trying to answer in diabetes is that to what extent the monocytosis is contributing to defective lesion regression. So is it due to more monocytes being produced into the circulation and they are being drawn into an atherosclerotic plaque in diabetes that is contributing to plaque regression? And so that's where we started. And we in fact found that the more the number of monocytes in the circulation you have, you have a, a, a worst outcome. Very interesting. So where do you see this uh, science going in terms of drug development and helping people with uh, sure. post-MI? So, uh, so with regards to MI, uh, what we see here is that um, neutrophil to lymphocyte ratio is, w is one single strongest predictor of recurrent attacks in patients. So what does that mean? It means that neutrophils are not good for your heart. So you may have to contain them, you may have to reduce their number. So what we are trying to understand is that is there any way we can specifically block neutrophils, for example, but not block monocytes. Some of the monocytes are good for your heart, macrophages are good for your heart. But we are trying to see uh, if we can develop a therapy to approach only neutrophilia. So, so far we have found that uh, uh, certain, uh, chemical, uh, uh, certain chemicals that have been developed for other diseases like systemic sclerosis, they're known to inhibit the A and A and binding to TLR receptors. So that's the pathway that we are trying to focus right now on. So hopefully, I'm uh, imagining, uh, envisioning that one day uh, when a patient is admitted to a cath lab, we could give a, a bolus or a shot of uh, this drug so it has to prevent neutrophilia and then open up the arteries so that they will have better outcomes. Oh, that's terrific, very exciting. Congratulations again well, thank on being you. one of the finalists and, and good luck tomorrow. Yeah, thank you so okay. much. Yeah. Thank you.